This is an animation I had rendered out earlier, and it's an existing palm tree. I think it's on the, it's called the DGV Holiday Resort. And one of my Patreon supporters, Victor, hello Victor, was asking me, hey, is there a way that we can animate existing geometry, uh, plant geometry for, for his uh, art project? And that's very difficult to do. If you have existing geometry that isn't rigged, it's very difficult to make that move like this. So video games do this all the time, but they usually have a very different approach to it. They have these, what are they called? These plant clusters. They're kind of sheets. Uh, you, you've probably seen them. There's one flat plane and there's another flat plane and they intersect. And this is just simple geometry onto which you have uh, stuff projected and you move that around. If it's stuff like that, you can use a material kind of noise modifier. And in my case, I didn't have that luxury. I had existing geometry. Uh, rigging it from scratch would have been too difficult. So I decided, uh, I, I tried it, but it's very difficult to make the right selections to attach the bones to. Then another option would have been to use something like DeForce, but that's very error prone on geometry like this because it seems to intersect with one another. And as soon as I happens, you know very well, DeForce doesn't like that. And he wanted to use this in Das Studio. So I came up with a couple of approaches and this was one of them. And uh, this uses a sphere on the outside of the actual geometry that we then animate, like make wobble around subtly. And then we use a mesh deformed modifier to make that sphere basically influence what's inside it. And that's what I'm going to show you now. So I'm going to bring in a tree that I have previously exported, and that's just regular geometry. Uh, let me see if I can find it first of all. I think that was an OBJ. I've exported that from Das Studio. So this is where that came from. Also, where was that? Was it in here? And then was it in plant animation? There we go. I have a folder called OBJs and there's these palm trees in here. I'm just going to stick with the same one, palm tree number four. I'm going to go and not split this by object. I don't like that. And uh, we can keep the vertex groups if we have them. We'll see if this works. This might come in ever so slightly too large. Like this, that is a bit big, <laughs> but uh, let's, not, let's not worry too much about it. Let's deselect it and reselect it because that's what you got to do in Blender. Then we go and scale this down by a factor of 100. So S 0 0.01. And now we have a tree that's, you know, more the size of what, what I was expecting. It's, I think I exported it at 100% from Das Studio, which usually comes in. That means it's a bit too uh, big. So right now it looks like X is four meters high. So that's sort of the right uh, height for a palm tree. So I do, I do like that. So we can have a look at uh, at the tree. Does it have materials? Don't think it does. Oh yeah, it does. It's got a diffuse texture on it. So it's just geometry and it's fairly dense geometry, as you can see. So I've tried rigging it. I've tried doing all kinds of things with it, but it just uh, didn't work. My, my biggest problem was that I couldn't quite select the correct bits and pieces. So while it has material zones, I could get rid of the leaves uh, just to select the actual branches, but it was very difficult to then, basically I would have had to select every single leaf on every single branch to make this uh, to make this work and that would have been that was just that was just too tedious so instead i came up with this approach that is kind of a combination of the noise modifier that i showed you earlier uh, and this this thing that we're going to use uh, now so while this is our geometry we're not actually going to animate this from scratch In, instead i'm going to go and create myself a uv sphere here and then go and GZ that up to about kind of here, I think, and also GX that kind of over here. And then I'm going to go on S, scale that up like so, so that the whole palm tree is inside it. And maybe just go GY that a little bit to kind of here, maybe S, make that a bit bigger so that all the leaves are in there. Okay, let's go into edit mode and let's grab this bottom vertex here, I'm thinking and then use the magic of the, what's it called? Proportional editing with connected bits and pieces only. And I'll say GZ and I'll see how much of it we need to go and drag down. That's not, that's not quite enough, is it? I'm gonna go and GZ crank that up a little bit. I suppose if I look from the left, that's gonna be even better. So 
uh, I'll just go and G that down to about here. Righty, and then we're just gonna go and move the whole thing. G, Y, kind of over here. I just don't want any, any palm leaves to stick out. So, what were the other steps in this devilishly difficult puzzle? So we've got the palm tree on the inside of this. And before I get on with animating the palm tree, let me give the this here a little bit of a material. It doesn't have to be anything specific or fancy. I'll just call it the sphere mat. Just because I think the, the bright color doesn't really do it justice. If I go to the bottom here, I think under... Uh, viewport display I can set a color for this and just make it a bit uh, darker that was the plan well make put that over here <laughs> and even maybe give it a little color here let's make it something like um, something like that just because you know it's just easier to see in the also gray viewport now what was the next step so the clever bit was that we're going to attach some physics to this balloon here before we even get going with the palm tree and i think it's a soft body dynamics thing i believe oh i think this also needs a vertex group uh, just so that it has one doesn't have to be named anything specific just so that we have one and i believe that is important because we need to give that to the soft body modifier uh, was it goal i believe so yes in goal we have to define that vertex group and then under settings and strengths, we can go and give it some values. Uh, also, I think I might go and open my timeline a little bit. I'm not going to look at the whole animation, just the first maybe 150 frames. Because this is going to be repeated. So if I go and switch this on now, you can see that it's moving. So that's, that's kind of nice. And it starts moving a little bit faster and then it kind of bounces slightly less. So, you know, that's that's... That's a good start. So currently, uh, so then, then the plan would be to attach this with a mesh deformer onto the palm tree, and then the palm tree would do exactly the same thing on the inside. But the effect isn't quite right. So we want to make that, you know, flutter and wobble in the wind a little bit more. So let's see how that works. I'm going to go and uh, fiddle with stiffness now, <laughs> as, as they say. Maybe I'll switch this to one. Oh uh, yeah, I see stiffness to one makes this a bit, you know, bounce here actually it doesn't go to one it goes to 0.999 that's interesting there's also damping so let's go and put this maybe to 0.8 here and then there's damping so put this to 0.5 and see what happens damping makes it bounce a little bit longer i think so i don't really know what these values do i'm just you know fiddling around with them uh, so then i'm gonna change the default strength from 0.7 maybe to 1 and see what that does. Oh, that doesn't do anything. That's inter it's interesting. It's now kind of set in stone. Let's make it something like 0 0.2. Whoa, uh, that is, that's very soft, isn't it? That's <laughs> probably too soft. Let's crank that up a little bit too, maybe 0 0.7. Whoa, that's interesting. <laughs> to really see the effect, the animation has to start from frame zero again. So that's why I've shortened it a little bit to 150 frames. Okay, I mean, it's a start, so it's moving, but it's also, there's more to it than, than just doing that. So what we can do now is add a, a weight modifier to the whole thing, which, which is very cool. And that'll be something that's up here under object mode. You can switch that to weight painting. And when you do that, I've always forget the, the actual, um, direction. I'm going to start it from the, from the bottom. So I'm just going to hold left click and drag. Oh, that's not what I meant. <laughs> I meant the gradient. This here, that's the gradient tool. Left click and drag from the bottom so that we have a bit of a gradient there. Bottom, I believe, is a stronger influence than the top. It's probably the wrong way around. But let's let's check it out anyway. Let's go kick off the animation. No, it was the correct one. So now we're adding this to the whole animation. Just that little bit of a wobble there. So it's a bit like, it looks like a hot air balloon and it's also what I'd like to my tree to happen. I'd like for it, for its crown to bounce but for its um, stem not to be influenced at all or not so much really. It'll still be influenced a little bit but you know. Hey I think that's that's it. That's cracked it already. 
that is kind of nice and we can see this in near real time so 25 frames a second that is very good so what we currently don't see is of course the palm tree so if i switch this to um, wireframe well if i go back to object mode and switch this to wireframe i can see that the palm tree on the inside it currently isn't moving so that's the next thing that i need to do i need to attach this outer shell that i've made there and make sure that it's animation is now influencing whatever's inside it so that is what's happening next and we do that with the mesh deform modifier i believe this is now something that we need to apply on the palm tree so this is my sphere here might as well rename it into something called um sphere cage perhaps because that's the thing that has the wobble on it the next thing is going to be applied on the palm tree and that is going to be a modifier in our case, it will be a mesh deform modifier. And with that, I can select an object that is the thing that's gonna be deforming my palm tree. So I'll select under object, I'll select my sphere cage. And that's really all I need to do. I can set a precision value. And now I need to click bind and that will take a moment. So this is something that might make blender appear unresponsive but eventually it'll come back so it says now not responding it's not actually the case it's it's just calculating things in the background which is nice so let's give it a minute oh there we go it's done so when this button here turns gray that means it's bound properly and now i can go and make the sphere cage invisible so that I only have the palm tree. And this is not gonna be real time now, but if I do play that back, you can see that the same thing that happened to the outer cage is now happening to the palm tree. So that's kind of cool. It does take a little bit of time to calculate that. And I've only got the first 150 frames marked. So the first, kind of the first 50 to 100 frames, they're very um, strong. So that might not be something that I want to include in the final animation. And 150 frames then is, might not be uh, long enough. So I'm going to go and increase this a little bit. So perhaps to my end frame is going to be, say, 350. That makes it a bit uh, longer. And I'm going to still start the simulation from frame one, but I might not use the actual animation until frame 100. So let's see what happens if I go and play this back. I actually, might as well actually just go and uh, and make this visible again, just so that I see a bit of a, a bit of an effect here. Or might actually unbind that modifier that I've just bound on there. Because if I say unbind, then I have my more or less real-time preview back, ish. Also, I thought, maybe it's because it's selected. No, is it, is it still bound here? No, it's not. And what I wanted it to do is essentially make sure that it still vibrates and wobbles past frame 150. And it looks like it's only doing this uh, during, the, during the preview. So I can bake this uh, calculation onto disk. Let me do that. That's on my sphere cage on the, phys on the physics thing. And it's at the bottom here under cache so i can select this cache and then give it an actual directory where it should be also i thought maybe i can't 207 frames on disk cache is outdated yeah i know let's say you know bake it now and oh yeah also simulation start simulation end needs to also be 350 otherwise it doesn't really do that so now when i hit bake it goes through and calculates this and writes it to disk. I think it's an MDD point cache actually, which is, you know, groovy. And once it's done it, it'll be accurate per frame. So it doesn't then calculate it per frame again. Oh, use library path. This is why I wasn't, um, I wasn't really, I couldn't really specify a path because it's using the library path. Groovy, there we go. That's, that's that. So if I go and play this back now, I can see subtle movements. So that's groovy. Now, I wish I had almost made it a bit stronger because towards the end it gets very, very subtle. So I might need to think about... I might need to think about um, redoing that. Let me go and remove that mesh deform modifier now that we know things are working okay. And I will go and uh, delete the bake and just fiddle with the value a little bit more just so that I know 
maybe just towards the end here that start animation is now 250 and then end is 350 so it'll, it'll loop me this this piece here so i'll see if i can make this just a little bit stronger towards the end and that'll be on the physics settings that's under here stiffness and damping and the default strength so let me see if i can if i can these are the values i'm fiddling with here it's a default if i go and make that 0.4 yeah, so that's just that's just making it a little bit more wobbly here. Point two, that's even more wobbly. That might be too much actually. So point two might just be a little bit too much. Oh, it's just right. I can't tell. <laughs> Let's start at frame one hundred then on the next iteration. Just go through and see what that looks like. No, actually, that's that's quite nice. I mean, I do want it to be used visible. So I'll, those are the values that I'm using then. Point four for stiffness. Point three for damping. 0.2 for default, 0.6 for minimum, and 1.0 for maximum. So those are the values that I'm using for my animation. And I'm excluding the first 100 from the actual animation later, because that'll look... Uh, I can show you actually why, why I'm doing that, because the first 100 frames, they look extreme. So I'd like to exclude them and just start here, really, and then just loop that in my... or use that for the tree that I'm going to export. So I'll go and switch this back to 100. Oh, let's make it 101. Let's let's make that 101 so that I have exactly uh, 150-ish frames, 250 frames for the animation. But I still need to go and bake everything from frame one because that's just that's just how this thing calculates it. Uh, bake. Then I'll go back to my palm tree and go back to the modify settings and I'm going to go and add the mesh deform modifier to this again. Mesh deform, here it is. And in it, I'm going to go and select my mesh cage or sphere cage rather. And precision, I'm going to, I'm going to leave five. I suppose four would be less precise, but quicker in calculation. And then higher values will be more accurate, but also will take longer time. So I'll go and bind this. Let me go and save this again. And then I'm just going to invisibilize my cage sphere and have a quick nosy what the animation looks like. Well, there we go. That's kind of cool. Let me go and quickly set up a camera, second light source, and then we'll go render this out in Eevee. It doesn't have to be anything spectacular. That's what it looks like. So it might be a little fast, so I would probably use my um, video editor and just make that a little bit um, slower. But you can see the, the effect that it has is very, very cool. Let's go and put it on repeat. I love it. And this is with existing geometry and it's not rigged. So it's also not using a wind effect, which is another possibility. And if you use that cleverly and if you tweak the values a little bit, that's that's seriously cool. So for Victor, what I then did is export this as an OBJ sequence, essentially, so that I can then use every single frame as a morph in Dash Studio and then use the Animorph script to dial up morph one on frame one, morph two on frame two, and so forth until the end of the animation. So he could use it in Das Studio. It's very, very cool. So what I'd like to do now, just as a little experiment here, is add the noise modifier to the outer cage as well. Since the top part of the tree is already wobbly, if I now go and shake it in the X and Z direction, then it'll just shake it loose a little bit. So it's, you know, something, something like that. I'm going to go and unbind this. I might even make the tree invisible. And now we have this guy again doing, doing his thing. And obviously also the unrendered view. So the noise modifier is something else that's kind of exciting. I think I have to switch this back to, uh, to frame one for that, or frame zero rather. A noise modifier isn't a modifier that can be applied with the modifier tab here. It has to be applied with the graph editor. So that makes this a little bit more funky. I've explained how to do this in an earlier video. I'll just go and make myself a second viewport here. And this one I will turn into the graph editor. And then with my outer cage selected, I'll just hold down the I key. Actually, I'm going to go on Control A first and say I'm going to apply the rotation and scale. 
there. That's that's the first thing. Then I'm going to go and hit I to apply a keyframe. And I'm not so interested in the rotation. I'm just going to be interested in the location. So I'll, I'll add essentially a keyframe for location here. And that gives me three tracks, X, Y, and Z. I don't think I'm going to use the top bit, so the Z axis uh, well, sorry, the Y axis I don't need to use. I'm just interested in, no, sorry, it is the Z axis and we're in Blender, aren't we? Oh, so confused. So X and Y, this way and that way, but not that way. So that's Z in Blender. I'm gonna go and delete that channel. And then on X and Y, I'll apply myself this noise modifier. Let's add modifier, namely noise. And if I go and play this, uh, it will now be can we actually see it? It should now go left and right uh, quite a bit, but I can't actually see that that's happening. Oh, is it because I know why it is? Because we're still looking at the baked bits and pieces here. I need to go and delete the bake quickly, delete the cache, because it's just looking at that data. So now I can see it, that makes sense. Now I can see it. Let's go and crank up the strength a bit. Yeah, there we go. So now it's it's got a lot of gusts of wind going here. <laughs> Strength is probably better off being one. <laughs> wow, that is just that's just so much. Also, it's it's erratic. So what my movement I'm after is probably uh, better served by something scaled out, like so. Yeah, let's call the scale twenty here and make it much less, so strength is still uh, too much. I'm gonna go and divide everything by 10. Is, it, is that how we do this? I'm gonna go and change my, my values again so that the end of the animation still is frame 100 again, just so that I only loop through this. There we go, that's perfect. So I'm gonna go and uh, try 0.5 here. Is that, is that better? No, that's, that's even worth it, Let's say 20. Oh yeah, that's too much. Like five then. And I have to wait until this comes back over 100 to be, you know, to make it, uh, to make it all a bit more subtle. Oh yes, you're late to class, Jeremy. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you. Very good morning to you. I'm just animating myself a palm tree and I'm putting finishing touches on it. So this is still a little bit, you know, very stormy. Maybe, maybe we'll give the strength the value of two instead. So that it's, because the moment I, I move this thing around, it has a lot of influence over, over what else happens to the, to the tree. So two, I think that that's still in the realm of subtleness here. And notice also that I want to, I want for this to carry on into frame 350. So it'll just keep shaking this around. I think this is a good value. I think this is a good value. While this is doodling here, let me show you, oh, actually we'll do this when we're rendering. Um, I'll show you the experiment that we've just done. So this is this is quite nice. This is already version two of it. I'm happy with this. Let's apply it also to the Y axis because currently it's only applied to the X axis while we're doing this. Let's do this as well. And that's done with copying the modifier and pasting it onto the Y value. But because it's now exactly the same, it'll now be both applied to X and Y's and the thing just appears to be going diagonally. That's not what we want. So let's move, just shake up the Y a little bit by adding a different phase here. So if we just crank that into a different value, we'll still have the same parameter, but it'll now, the graph itself is going to be a little bit different. So now it's going to have um, different bits and pieces in the Y and the X. We can even make the X, the, sorry, the Y a little bit stronger if we want. If we do want to do that. Uh, that's very stormy now. But hey, let's play with it, see what happens. Like I did before, I'm gonna go and let this bake its thing out from frame one to 350 on the soft body dynamics modifier here. Let him render this out. And then I'll go and attach it to the actual palm tree. And then we'll go and render that out. See what happens. Okay, here we go. This is stormy palm tree now. Whoa, look at that. This is nice. I don't think I had seen that animated like this before. I'm actually digging this palm tree. I'm glad I recorded how I did this. I might tighten this up in editing 
and then turn it into a YouTube video because I really like this. And I wanted to make sure I don't forget the steps. So I'll write this out as an article as well. So there's some, some bits and pieces here with screenshots that are just, uh, that are just beautiful. I just think this is a beautiful, fairly quick way, quick and dirty way to get movement into existing geometry. So it'll be different if you say, hey, I need a palm tree and it needs to be rigged. I need to do this from scratch. You can use something like uh, Plant Factory for that. That's an expensive tool, but it's a great, great tool. But there's also a lot of stuff that you need to do for it. So uh, this is how I thought, you know, um, this might be, if you have an existing object that needs a quick and dirty animation, this is a great way of doing it.